All right, welcome everyone to the uh, Penfield Community Garden Committee meeting for September. I'm calling the meeting to order and we can start by approving the minutes from August. Thank you, Chris, for doing those minutes for us. Um, anybody wanna help out in approving those minutes for us? Uh, make a motion okay. to approve. All right. A second. Okay. Um, and there were a couple things in the minutes that were um, action items that we'll get down to later, but um, just a couple of communications. I have uh, started the process for a compost buy-in. Um, our gardeners did ask about it, and I know we couldn't do one in April. So um, we're going to do one at the end of September, and we're going to make it so that you know, when people come to get their compost, that they're spaced apart. And I think we have a better handle on um, the precautions. And it should only be about maybe 12 or 15 people. So um, it's not going to be that many people. And we're going to go ahead and do the compost buy-in from Vermagreen. Um, so that'll, that'll be uh, towards the end of September. I think September 25th. Um, fencing, almost all the fencing of the deer fencing has been, the deer netting has been replaced. Um, Sabrina got the, the netting order from Home Depot and actually it was a, it was a really good netting because the guy at, I think it was Finger Lakes Trellis or Deer Buster said, you know, you don't need this 950 pound load. You can go with that 700, you know, pound load or whatever. So we got 300 feet from um home depot it took a while to get that and we still have to do the critter perimeter which was started on the south side that's the area that was mulched was critter perimeter um the gates have to be redone part of the the front end the west and then the back which is the east am i getting my directions right I think I am. Um, but I would say right now, 80%, 85% is done because we did the whole south side, almost all of the north side, and half of the west side. Um, with the gear netting and the four foot metal fencing, the um, chicken wire critter perimeter still needs to go all the way around. We have the materials, we have the stakes, we have everything that just, we need to get it done. And without having the workday projects this year, it's been kind of hard because people will say to me, I don't know how to do it. I'd like to do it. And then I try to meet them. And so that's been a little bit of a challenge, but I think, you know what, we'll get it done. And the fence is definitely better than it was at the beginning of the season. Um, we don't have all the holes and all that other stuff. So that's a plus. Um, this weekend, the Rotary is going to be sealing the shelter furniture. They already sealed the shelter. Um, so we thank the uh, Penfield Rotary for working on that. And are they going to dig the raspberries too, Lisa? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, if if we are able to, we will. Um, we'll see how that goes. I think we have... Um, enough uh, sealer in the shed plus what's here um they're going to furnish their own brushes and buckets and stuff like that oh great that's awesome thank you um let's turn the dehydrator on <laughs> the the raspberries i'm talking about are the ones that are in 8b greg is that the bed or 9b you're muted greg 8B. 8B. Okay. So those raspberries, that was formerly Danny and Chops' bed. Um, we need to dig those raspberries out. And I know that Ben or the Rotary were going to work on that. So maybe it's yeah. going to be Ben who is one we'll of the scouts. Okay. He's one yeah. of the scouts. That bed does have to be dug out of raspberries. And I think it's going to need some soil. It's so low, Greg, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> So 
I don't know if we should add soil to it or just expect the new person who picks up that bed to add it. But after we dig the raspberries out, it's going to be tragically low. Well, maybe if we uh, process some uh, compost, we might be able to reclaim some from the compost. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. There's some back there, right, Mark? Yeah, it hasn't okay. been sifted yet, but there's plenty there. There's there's plenty there to fill that bed. Okay, so maybe we'll do that. We'll try to, or maybe we can get somebody on that project to do that. Um, just because I, I mean, you know, when you come into the garden as a new garden member, I think probably um, having no soil in your bed would be a real downer. <laughs> and that bed's going to be pretty empty once we take those raspberries out. So are they doing something with the raspberries or are we just digging them out? We are going to put some of them in the back of the food okay. forest and then others will pot up and let people take. Oh, okay. So, um, or, I mean, we could plant them all along the edge of the forest too. They're great, you know. They, yeah. They're a great native. And that's something that I think, you know, could be good for our forests. But I don't know. Um, but I know that once we take them out, that bed is going to be pretty it's going to be pretty low. It's probably going to be a hole. <laughs> um, so. A lot of weeding to be done in that uh, bed also. Yeah. Have, uh, gone wild. Yeah, it's going to have to be. And I know you cleaned it out already once. It's going to have to be something that we do. I mean, most of the beds are pretty well kept at this point. Um, you know, there were some people that went on vacation and. Um, you know, then when they came back, they did clean up some, but I think most of them are, are pretty well kept. Um, there's just a couple that I can think of that were a little overgrown. So anything else that you guys have for communications that you need to communicate? All right. Public participation? Any public here? Don't see any public. Public participation? All right. <laughs> <laughs> She's like half yeah, asleep. She's like, what are you doing? Um, <laughs> action items. Thank you cards and postcards for pre-reserves of bed. And I know Nancy's in another meeting, but I know she worked on this. Um. She was printing out postcards for pre-reservation for beds. Um, and thank you cards for all of the people we have to thank. And then I was going to make like a, you know, a letter to our garden members because we can't do a dinner just to say like, thank you for a great season. You know, I don't know, kind of like the kind of letter you might put in a Christmas card, but it won't be about me and my family. It'll be about the garden. <laughs> Um, Lisa's probably going to help me write that. Right, Lisa? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we'll send it out to everyone and have the postcard reminding them of pre-reserve because we're not going to have the dinner to kind of use to say, don't forget to pre-reserve your bed. Um, I should probably put a sign on the gate again, too, like I did last year. And... I have no doubt that we're going to sell out again because I know weekly I have people stopping and asking me about beds there. And Greg has too. Um, so. And I've gotten calls. Yeah, it's it's going to be pretty competitive at the beginning of next season, I think, in terms of getting beds. So don't forget to pre-reserve. <laughs> oh, you're muted. Yeah, maybe we should have an auction for the open beds. Mm. You, know, the highest, you know, the highest bidder gets, you know, gets their pick of beds and then you just go down. <laughs> wow. That's a great idea. <laughs> you know, see how see if they want it bad enough, you know, they got a bid. Right. Out. I wonder how I wonder how the recreation department can That's handle those finances. That's a great fundraiser. Right, yeah. <laughs> there you go. I could see it like getting a little bit heated though, you know, I mean, people want to grow their own vegetables. <laughs> um, I might be willing to sell my bed, you know, if, if they're willing to pay enough for it. 
<laughs> well, will you still put out the bull traps for us, Mark? Because, yes, you know. Yes. Okay, good, good. Um, so those were the major action items besides continuing to work on the fence. Um, so, Sabrina, how about financials? We got our budget document. Yep. Um, the latest thing was the deer fence. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't have it in front of me. I think you've spent around 1400 Okay. You have 20-something left, 22000 left. Yeah, so then I... I mean, I really think that we should go ahead and buy our solar equipment and get ourselves some of that electrically powered equipment that runs with the batteries with mm -hmm. that money. I know we don't have a lot of people here tonight, so we might need to talk more about that in the next meeting because I know we can't vote on it or anything right now. We don't have enough people. Um, unless there's something else that we really think. I don't think we need to buy new physical gates. I think the gates just need to be rewrapped with the um with the deer netting. So um and we need one we need to replace one pole which I haven't been able to source yet uh with the height. I can find four by fours at the height, but I gotta get um the grapevine people to have the material for the tall um, post, the one post we have to replace. This is Fran is coming in. Are you connected, Fran? It's connecting to audio. Yeah, looks like they're in trouble with the audio. Yeah. So. There we go. There we go. Now we hi can Fran. hear. Hi, Fran. Hi. Hi, Mary. Hello. Sorry, I missed book club last night. Um, I know I miss you. What the hell? I heck? know. I'm sorry. You're so uh, we were talking about um, we have about two thousand dollars left. Just don't touch it. And I think major um, money items right now on our uh, five year capital list would be our solar our solar project so that we could have battery operated machinery at the garden. So, cause the battery operated trimmers are a lot lighter and that's something that we could purchase. So, um, Great. I think next, I think next month we should vote on that. I, I don't know if we would have the, enough money, but I would even vote. I would even say battery operated lawnmowers because we have one of those ego lawnmowers and man, that, I bought the Ego Snowblower. I mean, those things are killer. They are great. Um, so. Yeah, I think I, our lawnmower is, I think our lawnmower is really nice, actually. I just used it a couple of weeks ago. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think it works okay. I mean, it, it does Penfield charge us to maintain it? No. Mm -mm. They take it to the shop and they... Um, they uh, do the regular maintenance on it, and we get the gas from Penfield too. So no, they do not. Okay. okay. That's a it's a good deal from you know the town, in terms of the Department of Works. They really you know they work they work with us on that. They do the same thing for our chiller brand too. So that's great. Um, I wasn't talking about replacing our mower. I was saying it's been an extra mower because those will fold up, the electric uh -huh. ones. They okay. fold up, and if we got solar and we got a converter in the shed, we could have battery-operated trimmers and things like that. It's less, you know, fuel that we have to keep lying around. But okay, um, that's just. Uh, I think that's something we could talk more about next month. We have more people on to kind of vote mm -hmm. on it because um, we don't have that much, and. Uh, we don't have anyone pre-registering for beds, but Sabrina did say that there are people who are already calling. And I was saying it's going to be pretty competitive for a bed in January. So everybody make sure they pre-reserve. <laughs> can, so you you can you pre-reserve now? I thought I, I, I missed it. Did I, no, no, I, October, in October. Okay. We're going to send out. 
Yeah, we'll send out a notice about it. Um, um, we're going to send out a mailing to all our gardeners. So you'll be aware of it, okay? Yeah. And hopefully everybody else will, you know, see the mailing and be aware of it too. Hey, Dad. That yeah. Brings up a question: Should we? Sure. I don't know how many. I don't know how many people have two beds. Hey, on. But should we put a moratorium on anybody else getting two beds? Because the more people that have two beds, the less members we have. I was thinking about that too. You know, that's unless, true. And, Would we grandfather in those people who have two beds? Well, I guess we could ask if they'd be willing to go down to one because oh. everyone that does is another member that we get. But yeah. I, I don't know who has them and who doesn't. So, um, that, I mean, that is a good point. We could say that due to high demand from now on, we'll only offer one bed. Right. Um, and it would be hard to say to people who have put a lot of work into a bed, like now right. you can't have two beds. Um, we I could think say grandfathering is okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think that's yeah. right. I mean, because well, there are. Already how many people have two beds, you know, is it more than seven, eight, 10? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's several. Um, I'm counting like, um, well, they used to, they used to, they used to, I'm like counting in my head of how many people have two beds. Um, it's, I'm sure it's more than five. Oh, definitely. Okay. It right. may even be as close has 10 so, right. um, so there's you know there's 10 extra people that we don't have right yeah good point so i think and i don't know um we would have to do some something with our our member handbook because i think it's in our member handbook that you know you can have one or two beds and we we charge a discounted price to have two beds right for our price structure is one bed for 40 and two beds for 70. Is that it? So, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so we would have to only do one bed for 40 then right. and not um, kind of, we were kind of incentivizing two beds, I guess. So we could get people in to stay in. I'm not sure. Um, but now we're talking about penalizing people who have put a lot of money into the soil and no, putting the for several so years. Can't those in. No, the people who have them now are fine. Okay. Yeah. You just don't want any future double buyers. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think that's an interesting idea. I don't even know how many beds we'll have available after people pre-reserve. How many beds do we have available this year? Like seven? Yeah, it wasn't much. It wasn't much. So maybe that's why if we have less than 10 beds available, like we can't offer more than one bed, we could put that in our in our our yeah, member the in list, our rules, right? The wait list is a lot more than we can accommodate. That's a good reason. Right. Right. So say if we have less than 10 beds available. We can't offer any more than one bed per person. I mean, if we put that into our rules, it would, I guess it would get people to pick up a bed, but. Um, yeah, but somebody might sign up, you know, before, you know, they might sign up for two beds before that list gets, you know, waiting list gets started or. You know, what happens if somebody signs up for two beds earlier? Well, we can go by what it was last year. There was probably seven or eight on the wait list that still have not, you know, been accommodated. So do those people get first dibs in January? No. Um, I mean, I kind of, like, start new every year. Yeah, I mean, I... I mean, if they call... Right. I don't call them. Okay. I want to... I can. I don't know if that's a good idea because you're going from season to season now. Right. But I, I don't, I don't really know. And I tell them all, you know. I would start fresh. I would start fresh again, like, you know, 
Yeah. I mean, they all have the same opportunity. I tell them it's first business day in January. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's, it's anybody who comes to the garden and asks me how to get the bed. I say, if, you got to be there the first business day of January if you want to get a bed. I mean, yeah. competition is high at this point, but I think um, I think if we have less than 10 beds, we could say pick up one bed each. Because, I mean, some of our newer members come in and they don't have success and they drop out. Mm-hmm. So it might be better if we're, you know, if we're really kind of packed. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, even raise it to 15. If we have less than, you know, 15, why say seven? Seven, I mean, there's not that many. If you had less than seven beds, even if somebody did get doubles, that still doesn't generate a lot of, uh, it, it doesn't, it only generates seven new members. Right. You know, I don't, I don't know. I, I would raise that. I mean, <laughs> I think it's a good idea, you know, grandfather in. And then, yeah, whoever, you know, just single beds only. If we have less than, you know, 15. Or, I don't know. I mean, we'd be willing to pay the full price for double beds. Maybe that's what you could say. I don't know. Well, what's our objective here? Get more people or get more money? Oh. I think it's to get more people. Get more people. Yeah. I mean, look at the trouble we have now getting people to work. You know, the more people you got, the bigger pool of talent you have. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then, then we, uh, I would say raise the bed number, uh, you know, put the restriction on if we have less than 15 or 20 beds available, then you can only get singles that way there. Because right now, if you say, well, if we only have seven beds, you can't get any doubles. Well, that's only going to generate a few extra people. But if we raise that number, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, my only concern would be is that, I mean, so far the last few years, we've had a waiting list. We've not had, right, we've not had open beds. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering if you just put the moratorium on it for right now and if it yeah. comes to a point, because let's say we get over 15 open beds and then somebody takes a second, then you've lost that for however long they decide to keep it. Right. You know, I, I agree with Mark. You had the... You know, the, the discount on the two bids when you first started the garden to as an incentive for people to to join the you've got a, a high demand. So you can, you know, be a little more uh, less aggressive with that and get more people. And like you said, Mark, new people and <clears throat> maybe some younger people, so join, no offense, but other people, families joining mm-hmm. um, for sustainability. Yeah. So how would we word that? Do you guys think in our in our um our membership guide and our like for the recreation department, how would we word that? Like any new members coming in can only get one bed? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would just I think all you need to do in there is that it's only you're only allowed to get one bed. Like, so yeah. as of 2021, it's a single bed only, and right. you're grandfathered in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, due to high demand, you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Due to high demand. Got it. And you can't. I'm just will. writing it down so I don't forget. You can't will. You, if you have two beds, you can't will it to, like, your kids or something. So, <laughs> you know, oh. it's only good for the person that has it. Can you believe it? I could see that happening. Don't even laugh, right? <laughs> well, can you be tougher on people who never, ever, ever volunteer and say, um, you're not going to be invited back? If you, you you are expected to sign up for once or twice a season, I don't know. We could yeah. be if someone were tracking who's doing that and who's not doing that, you know? I mean, I hate to say it, but they did sign on to doing their part for the whole right. community garden. Right. Yeah, I agree. I just don't know who is and who isn't because some people do things and they don't tell me they did them. And then I go, I wonder who did this, you know? Yes. So right. some people right. are very stealthy about their work. <laughs> and others will send me an email and say, you know, I weeded this or I did that because they, for some yeah. reason, think I'm keeping a list. Um and I don't keep a list because it's a lot to track. 
None of us want to be the garden police. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same way with, you know, making sure people are picking picking their vegetables and stuff, you know. Right. You know, you know there's people in there that, you know, for whatever reason, don't always get all their stuff and it winds up rotting on the vine or whatever. And no, we want to pick it and put it in the box for the parented food shelter. Yeah. You know, we've, we've talked that many times. We've talked about that. And unless you want to be the, you know, the enforcer for it, it's it's not an easy thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get it. Honestly, it's easier to control bowls. Yes, it is. <laughs> Right, Mark? <laughs> yep. I actually caught a couple. Yeah? And I, they were, they were well, when I still had green beans, so this was, well, before I, it was probably back in, probably, um, it was the middle of July, end of July, when I was, when I was picking green beans, and I actually caught two, two big ones. There was um, a baby boom um, of voles in August. Yeah. Because I, I had no problem all summer long, and all of a sudden... My beans started getting chopped on, and I set a trap and caught two in like one week. I think it happens in August. I think they kind of yeah. they explode in August. Yeah. Um, now, don't come down to the higher numbers. They're all over the place in the higher numbers. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. I, uh, I was there today. They were all, you know, it's like they grow with the water. I was watering my gardens today, and it's like one, oh, wow. two, three. Oh. oh, I shall get the traps there. Yeah, it's time to start the fall and winter vole uh, critter trapping. So, just snap traps, right? Is that all you use? Is yeah. Snap traps. Oh yeah, we have like big snap traps, and we can get more one. of those if you want. Maybe I'll have uh, Sabrina order some more of those for us, so we can have a bunch. Um, all right, so I have that written down that we'll work on the language about. Um, getting beds as of 2021 due to high demand, single beds only for $15. People who had beds before 2021 will be grandfathered in. So we'll keep their, um, their pay structure. What'd you say about $15? $40. $40. 40 okay. You said Did I say the wrong number? Yeah. I might have. Yeah. $40 for single bed. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we have a boy scout named Sammy who's working on building compost sifters. Is he building more than one, Lisa? Oh, can't hear you, Lisa. You're muted. I think she's asking Nancy. Oh. Yeah. The tripod thing yes. with a screen, kind of like what you'd see an archaeologist has. Yeah. Um, that would he's be two confirmed. He's going to build two, which I think is great, and they'll be high enough that a wheelbarrow can go under them. Right. So I feel like that's going to be a pretty big improvement to our compost area. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there are any updates on that, Lisa. Anything you need to add about it? No, Nancy just said she's going to follow up with them to see how he's doing. Okay. I met with another Boy Scout whose name is Craig. Uh, he's a Penfield senior, and he is going to build the ramp from our pad for um, handicap accessibility. He has researched the ADA laws and the grade that needs to be done. Um, I spoke with him and his parents about that. Uh, he's a nice kid. I met them at the garden. They measured. Um, having it come off the ramp and then turn is not going to be the best thing. It really needs to go out straight. He said it's only going to go out five feet, so it's not going to be out in the middle of the parking lot. Um, and since he did the research, I'm going to say, okay, <laughs> you seem to know what you're talking about. And I know he's working on that project now. So the last I heard from him was he said, I measured it. I measured the grade. If I go to the, if I make a right angle and go down, it's going to be a tight turn. It's going to go into the flower bed. Um, so there's going to be some excavation of the flower bed. The other thing I talked to him about is leveling the land around the pad. We do have some cinder block, uh, not cinder blocks, uh, landscape blocks and things like that for hardscaping around there that um, he might help us with as well. So, Does it need a railing? 
Uh, he is going to put a railing up. Yeah. He needs to have a railing by law. So um, I'm pretty sure that's going to have to be inspected too. So I will let um, the building department know. Okay. Then I'll let Craig know. Okay. So he knows. Um, so with that, I'm wondering whether or not there's any chance of getting stone on our restoning on our parking lot. So he has a better surface to work from. Um, I'll make a note. Yeah, because we don't have much there to go on. Um, hey, and Dad. it's, uh, yeah. So when you're done with the ramp, I just want to talk about Ben's project. Okay. Food forest? Yeah. Okay. That's next on the agenda. Oh, it's on the agenda. Okay. It is. I put all the scout projects I, there I, on the agenda. We're doing so much with the scouts awesome. and the rotary. It's like amazing. I know. I'm, so, I'm just thrilled by it. Okay, go ahead. Food for us. So uh, Nancy said Ben is ready to plant. Um, so we'll work it with him as we talked earlier in the meeting about the raspberries. Um, we're looking to go by what? He edged the whole garden. He, he edged the garden recently so you might want to go see how that looks Nancy said it looks beautiful um and we've been out looking at trees we went down to home depot um they didn't have much we went to Bricola's and their stock was limited as well so we're sourcing looking at some other places um this week or next week and hopefully we'll be able to purchase those two trees that actually the rotary is going to be purchasing two trees um we're hoping to get some different fruit other than apple but we might have to settle for apple for this season at least and you know that we have fencing back by the shed that um chris had gotten donated i think it was chris right yeah um, and so don't forget that we have that there yep. so that we can fence those trees in initially yeah. uh, from the deer. So, yep, we do. So that's okay. an update on the, on the food forest. Any questions about scout projects? We have three on deck, compost sifter, ramp project, food forest. Pretty good. Yeah. These kids are really helping us. And I had a... Uh, Penfield High School student who did uh, quite a few hours of, um, probably did six hours or eight hours of um, volunteer work this summer with me on the fencing, on uh, left, um, digging out the area where the small shed is gonna get moved to. Does anyone know who brought the patio blocks yeah, it was to me. that area? It that was, was you? Okay. Yeah. Um. And I didn't have time before I had to go to Indiana because I was going to level, I was going to at least level the corners. Mm -hmm. Um, because the area that, that, that you guys, that you're, um, that they dug out, I mean, it's not terribly level. Right. Yeah. But my thought was there's enough, I left, there's enough there to cover the whole bottom of the, um, structure. That's great. That, that way we wouldn't have to worry about anything digging holes underneath or, um, if we just make a whole pad out of those, I figured that way it would take care of that problem. I figured it was you, but I wasn't sure. Mm -hmm. um, Dave and Carol found some more blocks and I brought those over, but they're not the same size as the ones that you had brought in. Mm -hmm. But you definitely have enough there for the base yeah. of that um, yeah. shed. So that's excellent. And then um, maybe what we'll also buy is two pieces of two or three pieces of fencing um to put up so when we move that shed there's going to be a sight line right through the shelter to the compost area so we want to put up some decorative fencing just to beautify that so you're not looking straight through like if you're sitting under the shelter you're not looking right at the compost area um so kind of where the fencing is now on either side of the shed, we get, I don't know, maybe three or four new pieces of fencing. And I think if we have the money, maybe we can purchase them from Home Depot now and hold on to them until we're ready to put them up. Um, like stockade fence, right? Yeah, or maybe even something prettier. 
Okay. I don't know. Right? It could be pretty. Yeah. Yeah, right. Um, pretty. Yeah, you just got to see it from the parking lot, from the road. Right. Yes. I mean, I know that vinyl is expensive um, and maybe not the most, um, you know, like the fence that you have, Lisa, is so nice. I don't know if Home Depot sells something that's comparable to that, but I don't think they do. <laughs> Lisa's fence is like wide board. You know how stockade is kind of thin? Yeah. This is like wider. Um, yeah, the new one is the wide uh, dog-eared uh, board. Okay. And so, you know, I'm not sure. Um how much that would go for and if Home Depot sells a Y. I think they you know. do have it. Yeah. Maybe I not that, quite as thick, but it'll have yeah. a sim similar look. Right. I mean, I think the so, stocky looks fine now, but I think the wider one is a little bit more attractive. We can, go, we can check it out. If you had somebody who was a good artist, you could put up a flat wall there and put a mural. Murals are a big deal. They are oh. a big deal. But it's not me, so <laughs> that's for sure. But uh, uh, so murals are a big deal. Yeah. But There's a mur mural club at the high school or a bay trail. Yeah. That would be beautiful. That's there is awesome. a mural club at bay trail. Yeah. Hmm. Have the kids do it. Yeah. What would you put there? Oh, maybe something garden related. Yeah. <laughs> like Lions flowers. And tires, oh, my. You could put a tree, you could put fruit trees on there. <laughs> Lions and tires. Yeah, I think, yeah, garden later would be appropriate. <laughs> well, you've got the, you know, you've got the, uh, the food garden that we're putting in the back. You could almost do a mural of that, you know. Ooh, good. I like this. Do they sell fencing that's just, I mean, if, if that's flat, could they not do the mural right on the fencing? Or is it better to do it as a wall? I I'd have to, We'd have I'd to talk have to, to the artist. <laughs> I think you just okay. flat exterior plywood or something, smooth plywood. Yeah. That you paint right on it. I'm so plywood. in love with this idea. Yeah. That would be really nice. I'm good with coming up with ideas. Just You really are, Mark. I was like, I'm you're like the idea guy. For, um, and it would be nice to try to get like some kids involved in that. I don't know if they're running clubs right now. I know my robotics club, I'm not running, um, but who knows, well, Maybe it's right? something we can do in the spring yep. because the weather's getting kind of iffy anyways. Yeah, I mean, if we, obviously the shed has to get moved, the wall yeah. has to get put up. <laughs> There's a lot of steps here, but right. um, yeah, I this has to go under... Um, I think this has to go under new business and I think this is a mural for compost area beautification is what I'm going to call it. <laughs> you could actually, I mean, they could paint it in the winter. Really? Bring it doesn't over. have to be up. It doesn't have, you know. Oh, you have to I see what you're saying. So we just have to measure it, see how big it needs to be. Right. Just have to decide what we want it to look like and then the panels, you know, in fact, it'd be better to be able to paint it inside. And then they could put some kind of like covering on it that would keep it from fading, like a shellac. I don't know. Yeah. You yeah. could put a, you could seal it. Put another. Okay. Put a right. seal. They probably it. know all those things too. Right. I should hope so because I clearly don't. <laughs> um, all right, I love that idea. I think that idea is fantastic. I mean that. The fence we have now was originally painted by Webster Extended Year Project when those kids used to come in the summertime. And they were so happy to paint that fence. So I think any kid would be thrilled to see that go up. That's a great idea. Um, and a great way to bring another piece of our community in if we can get a school involved. That'd be fantastic. There might be an art teacher we can talk to. Do you know an art teacher, Lisa? At Bay Trail? I don't remember... Any no, of I would have to okay. reach out to them. All right. So moving the small shed, obviously that's whatever the town's timeline is on that. But we have a plan for what's happening. We're making that pad and hopefully 
moving towards getting a cute mural up there, getting the kids in the community involved. Hardware cloth in the shelter for the birds. Larry said he was going to do that. Um, so, and I know they went away for a couple of weeks. I'm guessing they're, I'm not sure when they said they were going to be back. So, um, but there are no birds up there now because that season is past. So I'm guessing. We put signs up and told them to go away. No, no nesting here. Yeah. Right. No nesting allowed. <laughs> $500 fine for nesting. Um, so that's, uh, it's all cleaned up and ready to be put on. Uh, Glenn is not here. He was working with someone on the gutters. He has someone who knows how to do gutters, and he's just waiting for a date and time for that. I said, whenever that happens, it happens. I mean, people are volunteering their time. That's that's great. So um, that's and then hardscape around the shelter and the parking lot, flower bed. Glenn has some is going to do some, he said he was going to do some work on the front of that flower bed at the parking lot next to the shelter to kind of make a sort of a retaining wall there. So we would have a more definitive edge to that uh, parking lot area. So that's something that's still, um, we have all the blocks. He said he was getting, um, I think he said he had railroad ties he was going to bring over for that. Um, so that's, we have a lot of projects going on. <laughs> Our list of projects is very long. Um, so equipment winterization, that's something that obviously after October, like, I would say we usually shut the group down around the 24th or so. Like after October 24th, our equipment can be winterized, I guess. They take it over to the town. The people at uh, Department of Works take it over to the garage and, you know, take care of that for us. All right. Is that the same time you want the water turned off? Yes. That's typically the weekend we have the water turned off. And I mean, with some of the nights that we've had so cold, I know egg plants in my backyard are, the plants just brown. They got cold one night and it was like 45 or something and they, I don't know, they didn't like it. So, yeah, they're very sensitive to the egg plants. Um, Dot, I hate to interrupt. I need to leave for another meeting. Yep. So I'm going to hand over the hosting. Okay. Thank you. Bye, Sabrina. Thanks. Bye. I don't think I had anything else today. I can always send her an email. All right. Um, let's see. Where are we? Equipment renovation. So solar purchase we talked about earlier. And we don't have enough people tonight to vote on purchasing the solar panels and the equipment, but we already voted on it, didn't we? We did. I thought we did a while ago. Yeah, we did. I'm just saying we're going to use the rest of the money. We have money left over from this season, and we should use it to buy that material, even if we can't get it up now. Yep. We can put okay. it. Yeah, we can store it. That's a good idea. I mean, what, yeah. would, what, would, what would happen to the money if we don't use it? It'd go to Penfield, right? It goes into the general fund, yeah. Right. So yeah. Which is not our fund. So let's use it up. Yeah, we always do. Um, I think last year we gave away forty six cents. So yeah. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, we only need to save uh, f uh the money for the water bill. That's about the only thing. Yep. We we need to save the money for the water bill. Um and we need to buy one post for the garden um, to replace one post in the back. That's it. That's it for fencing repair? The post? Yeah, we bought everything. We have all the materials in the shed for fencing repair. Um, we bought all the metal fencing. We bought all the perimeter fencing. We bought all the uh, deer fencing. 
We've got the staple, the hog rings. We got two hog ringers. Yeah, it's all in there. Yeah. Um, critter update. So we're going to start trapping bulls. That's yeah, well, Let the trapping begin. Yeah. Um, no more evidence of woodchuck or rabbits in the garden. So. Yay. All in my backyard now. Yeah. <laughs> hey, tell them I said hi. Yeah. <laughs> I that metal fence really made a difference because they can't they can't you know stand up and chew through. So right. at least this year they haven't figured out how. So that's yeah. Good. Well, the key was, and what Bonnie told me, and what you know we also saw online was that you don't. You don't hang that metal fence. You don't ring it. You don't hog ring it too much, so it's wobbly. Because the fat guys that try to climb it, you know, little fat critters, nice. it wobbles, and they just drop. They can't, you know, they can't handle it. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, the little guys, the babies, they may climb it, but um, it's kind of tall. So old perimeter fence of metal was only about a foot high so it could just stand up chew through i never knew how smart woodchucks were yeah they're very smart yeah my home office i watch them all day long from my window they're hysterical <laughs> great i never thought a rabbit would jump that high remember when we were chasing that rabbit uh and it oh yeah leaped at the fence like two feet up, and I was like, "Holy Jesus, things oval thing or something!" I yeah, that was know, nuts. Yeah, growing up in the city, I never seen anything like that. <laughs> you know, I never, never seen anybody run around with a garbage can over their head like you. I thought that was pretty cool too. Uh, <laughs> that was entertaining. Yeah, I earned my rabbit warrior uh, stripes this summer, definitely. Um, so. Uh I just want to yeah. say earlier, early in the summer, probably late June, early July, there were some massive wasp nests mm -hmm. on, the, um, on the shed, the big shed. Yes. And I, there was a can of spray in there, so I came back at night, and hopefully, I don't know if I killed them all, but there was, they were not happy with me. And so that was you. So I had sent out a message, and I put, I taped up a sign. I don't know if you saw the sign. Yes, it actually was laying on the ground, but I did see it. And I was going to go buy the spray, and then there was a shortage of the spray. I didn't know there was spray in the shed. I must have not seen it. Well, there's like a part cannon, and I had a can here at home, so I just I used up the one okay. that was in the shed, and then I finished them off with the one I had here at home. Okay, because there was a, like, bee spray shortage this summer. Oh. I, I don't even know if you guys are aware of that. <laughs> Along with toilet paper and everything else. Yeah, along with everything else, we also could not get wasp spray. So, yeah, there was a huge nest. That's why I put the sign up. But I'm glad that you took care. I was wondering, if, see, that's the stealth like work that people do, and I never know who does it. And I'm like, I wonder who took care of these wasps. Yeah. Because I didn't want someone to get stung because. There was, a, there was a big one at the peak, and then there was one on either corner. Oh, I didn't even see the ones on the corner. Oh, yeah, they were, they were, they were probably half the size of that big one, but there was... So I sprayed them all and didn't see them after that. Oh. Yes, Lisa. <laughs> um, I just had a thought. Um, have you ever considered putting up a work log book at the kiosk, you know, on the backside where someone could write down, hey, I did this? Hmm. That's a good idea. Write that one down. I got a three-ring binder you can use. You have a three. Ring, you have a three ring binder. I do. We can probably put that. Yeah. Do you have like those plastic sheets? I do. Yeah. So I don't know if any. Going back to the wasp, I don't know if ever, anyone's ever heard this, but I heard that if you put up a fake wasp nest, that they won't nest there. <laughs> Is that true? I do not know. I don't know. I don't know. I've never heard that. <laughs> a decoy. <laughs> Yeah, like that they won't want to nest next to some other wasp or something. That makes sense because you very rarely see two next to each other. Right, and I read territorial. online that if there's one there, they won't build one next to it. So I don't know. 
I'd have to do more research to see if that's, you know, an old wives tale or truth. Like I said, there were, there was one on each corner and then that one at the peak. So I think it's true. And they were, they're not separated by a whole lot there. So I'm not sure how many we'd have to put up fake ones. We'd have to put up, but yeah, if it is true, I, yeah, I've never heard that, but who knows? Yeah, I don't know if it's true. So I don't know, but did you see the, the decoy hawk that's in our garden? No. Yeah, that kite? yeah, it's a kite. Some kind of kite thing? Yeah. Yes. I showed up one day and I saw this thing flying around. I was like, oh my gosh, look at that hawk. And it was a kite. It's on a tall pole. And there's like, it's not a string. It's more like a, a wire cable. And then there's a fabric hawk. And when the wind blows, it lifts up and it blows around the top of oh, the garden. That's cool. and I, yeah. I thought that thing is cool. We should buy some and put them around the perimeters. I want some for our yard. Yeah. I'm going to check them out. Maybe we can put them on the top of our post. Yeah. Could just, I don't think they'd last the winter. Like, if you left them up there for the winter, they're going to be gone. Sorry. So. All right. Um, that's critters. So we have under held items. We have our bat house that's still waiting to go up. Our owl nesting boxes still waiting to go up. And the ribbon cutting with rotary, which we would have to talk to Penfield wreck about. So we can't really, we can't pick a date for the ribbon cutting for our shelter. The rotary to host, a, you know, like a, an opening for our shelter pretty much. But it's been put off because of COVID and um, yeah. and we still have to find out if Nancy's friend has a cherry picker to put up bat houses and owl nesting boxes. Do you remember who it was that she said she thought had a cherry picker? Yeah, it was our, our tree arborist, um, but he has since retired. So I think oh. he may have, he, he may have sold his equipment. Okay. We can find out, but. There's another yeah. guy um, that we know um, who uh, works for another company. I think that's what we mentioned last time. We did not check that yet, so got to put that on our to-do list. Okay, because we now have two bad houses. Somebody else brought us a bad house. Mm -hmm. um, and I know they have to be a certain height up, and I don't know how easy it would be to put one up with a ladder up against a tree. That seems like it would yeah. be really hard to do. Yeah, we'll talk to our friend this coming week and see if he can help us out. I was going to say, are we putting them on trees or are we putting them on posts? Well, I think it's easier to put it on a tree because if you're putting it on a post, you have to buy the post and then you have to dig it into the ground. I just, I was just wondering. Yeah. And you know what it's like to dig try out there. <laughs> try, it on, try it on the trees and see if it works. Why not? I mean, we've got the whole land, right? Yeah. yeah, we got all those trees. <laughs> yep. I, there's got to be some trees in there that are tall enough to um, handle it. Yeah, if we can so, find out the optimal height, then we'll scope out an area. Okay. Put it on. Ready to know. And speaking of trees, we still need to trim the trees hanging over the compost bins and, you know, the. There's still quite a bit of overhang there. They probably ought to be trimmed back a little bit. Do we have any restrictions on what we can trim or cut down? Or no, I, I don't think we do as a committee. I think we can. Um, we're supposed to manage the land, so um, we did cut back some when we were there working on the fence. We cut back some, but there is definitely some more that has to be cut back. Um, so. I mean, anyone who has, I, I know I have a battery operated pole saw. That's something I can do if anyone else has one. I do have one. Yes. Um, <laughs> just taking a moment to talk about my battery operated pole saw. Um, so I, I mean, I, I can do some more. If someone else has the equipment to do it. Larry said he was going to work on it too. Um, so, I mean, obviously now's a good time because it's the fall. Right. That kind of brings me to something that I wanted to bring up under new business. Um, I had the idea of contacting um, 
either like SUNY, the SUNY Forestry School, or even here at RIT, Nancy had said they have a program in sustainability and asking if they had a student that would do a, like a forest management um, assessment for our little forest area. Um, and the only reason why I thought of this is my brother bought raw land in um, New Jersey and he had a forest manager come to the land and help him like determine how to manage the parts he's going to keep forested and how to make them more native. And I thought that might be like a project that a graduate student could do at our garden because I know that our forested area, it really doesn't have any understory except for that invasive black swallow ward. <laughs> and what what my brother got was this binder and it told him like what he what he needed to do and how he would do that. And um, I thought it would be a good way to connect maybe with a local college um, and give us some more um, sustainable land management over there in that area. So how does everyone feel about that? I think it's a good yeah. idea. I wonder just because of, of um, Shadow Pines, I wonder if the town has contacted anybody. Oh, well, that's a good question. Well, because of all that land, I, you know, I know, and I know there's still all these discussions about what to do with it, but there's a lot of forested area in that. Yeah. You know, and I wonder if the town has anybody that they used. Maybe yeah, I, I have no idea. I can ask Sabrina about that. Um, uh, yeah, I was thinking about seeing if it's, if there was a student, then it would be more of a, yeah, you know, like a learning experience, and ultimately it would be free. You right. know, like my bro my brother in New Jersey spent a couple thousand dollars having this person come, and you know, he got a. Right like a wonderful binder like this i read i read most of it and it was it was fascinating like i mean he's got a lot more land he's got like nine acres so right. um, but it was really interesting i have a quick new business item yep um so penfield rotary is having a fundraiser October 24th, it's a chicken barbecue and they're raising money for scholarship for Penfield High School students. And I'm wondering if it would be okay if we put, posted a, a poster on the kiosk at the garden and maybe do some cross promotion to the membership. Sure, why not? I mean, you guys have done so much for us with the shelter and the, the grant. What's the fundraiser? Is it like a... It's a chicken barbecue that... Um, Good smoke is going to be. Okay. I didn't mean to say what. I meant to say where's the fundraiser. Oh, sorry. Wrong WH. It's going to be at the high school. At the high school. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be a complete drive up um, service October 24th, 3 30 to 6 30. So I'll provide the copy um, to our newsletter editor who might be able to send it out to might the membership. Be, yeah. I might be able to do that. I could probably send that out. All right. Thank you. I also heard from um, Megan, one of our gardeners, that um, uh, there's a woman in Penfield who raises mason bees, and she's going to be doing a um, she's going to be doing a workshop on how to raise mason bees, and it's also in October. I'm actually looking right now for the date because. Um, I actually learned from this particular woman how to raise mason bees, and um, it was really good. Did you meet? Was it the same woman we got ours from initially? Yeah, her name was Lynn, and yeah. she she raises uh, mason bees, and she mason bees are really interesting. So I'm looking for the date on that, but I will I will definitely put that um, out to our gardeners as well. Um, it's October 3rd at 2 p.m. And um, it's Victor. And there's a, a $7 fee for a bee presentation and a tour. So I raise Mason Bees myself. It's at Historic Valentine Valentown Museum in Victor. 
um, yeah. 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 ACBs are cool. So they are really cool. <laughs> Any other new business? All right, our next meeting is October 15th. Uh, normally that would be our garden potluck dinner. We're not having, which means I'm not having any of the really good food that everybody makes. <laughs> um, oh, I know, it's terrible. It's awful. Um, so, the next meeting is October 15th and um, at 7 p.m. Does anyone have anything else for the good of the order for tonight? No? Motion to end the meeting, close the meeting, whatever we do. <laughs> <laughs> whatever that's called. Second. All right. Go. I will adjourn this meeting. Everybody have a great evening and enjoy your weekend. And hopefully I'll see you at the garden this weekend. Right. Good night. Good night. Adios. Good job. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.